Hi. In this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, and just give a quick introduction to how to set it up. Um, it's a piece of software that can be used to record your screen, your camera, and I think it's a good fit for sort of either recording or streaming lectures. Um, hopefully I'll convince you here. Um, it's a piece of software that was designed for video game streamers. Um, there is a little bit of configuration to do. It's not a straight out of the box plug and play, but it's not as hard as it maybe looks when you first approach the window. So um, I'm going to start here um, with a recording I've done in a virtual machine. It's hard to demonstrate the software while I'm using it, which I am now. So here's a quick intro to just the sheer basics of getting started with OBS. And uh, then I'll do a few more things uh, on this computer as I record. So this is a screen of a Windows virtual machine. And here I've downloaded and installed OBS from their website, but as you can see, done nothing else. So the first thing I'm presented with is this auto configuration wizard that I wanna run. And the first question it asks is, am I intending to live stream or record? OBS can do both. I think in this demo, I'm just gonna talk about recording. I'll try to do another one for streaming. And I think probably we want to record full screen size. And I think for any lecture, 30 FPS is probably just fine. So there's a few tests that are done by OBS here. How powerful is the CPU? What kind of video rendering can be done? And um, I think it's okay in this virtual machine. Um, it is offering to record and, you know, decent quality at my full screen resolution. Good. So now in the OBS window here, again, I, I feel like there's a lot to look at, but for the moment, the sources panel here, these are the things that are going to become part of your video. Things like um, a microphone. And well, this is why I have to do this in a virtual machine. Usually you wouldn't be able to hear me until I did this. So I've just added the microphone from my webcam um, that is connected to this VM. And you know, I'm gonna mute the other audio sources. This is the one I care about. And you can see as I talk, it's kind of keeping track of the audio levels. Um, one thing I'm going to do here that um, I always do, and I, I have an audio quality comparison where I've done the same thing with a little more explanation, but I'm going to add a noise filter and a compressor. For the compressor, um, I want to see my audio levels out here kind of in the yellow, maybe touching the red, and I think that's about what I'm getting. I could maybe turn this up just a little bit um, and the output gain, but that's probably the basics for setting up the microphone. The other thing I'm going to add in here is capturing my display uh, because I probably want to do a demo or show my slides or something. And if you have more than one display, it will show there. And for giving the like inception of this window recording itself, um, I now have my screen being recorded and I think that's probably enough to get us out of this virtual machine. I'm going to switch back to my own computer with exactly the same setup done, and I'll do a few more things there. Okay, I'm back in my own computer, a little bit more comfortable, but everything else is set up the same way. I've got my screen and my microphone being recorded. Um, the other source that I'm going to add that I usually want, and I think most of us do too, is a video capture device, which is the OBS way to say the camera or a camera. Um, so you can see there, uh, it gets added automatically. I have the choice if you have more than one camera to select the one, but that's mostly it. So in the, if you can see it there, uh, in the OBS window over here, there's, um, this, this uh, preview of the scene, I can drag myself to kind of wherever I want to be on the screen and resize that video capture. And I'm gonna drag OBS over to my other display. And uh, this is where I, of course, usually keep it. Um, you really probably do want two displays for this. If you don't have two displays, uh, if we are colleagues, then the tech staff does have some they can lend you. But this is most of what my students see most of the time. Um, the only other thing I might do here in this camera capture is um, 
it took me a long time to figure this out. Thanks, Brian Fraser, for showing me. Um, if you hold down Alt and grab the corners of a video uh, a source like this, you can crop. So, you know, I might want, you know, just less of the room around me taking up space in, in the video, so I can crop that back a little bit. And again, now if I take this over to my other screen, this is 90 plus percent of what my students see. Uh, me down in a corner uh, and some slides and I talk about the thing or do a demo. Of course, whatever's on my screen here um, is what they'll see. So uh, that being said, um, the other thing, and I think this is where uh, OBS really shines and the flexibility really comes out are the scenes. So this left panel, a scene describes the sources and how they're arranged. So I have these three and they're sort of put together this way. Uh, there was a default name there, um, maybe mostly screen uh, would be a better name for this arrangement. And I can have more than one of these and, and flip between them. So I'm going to make a copy of this, uh, let's say only screen. So of course, sometimes maybe I'm, you know, my head is in the way of something on the slide. So I might want another set up here that just is the same except without the camera. So now I have two scenes, um, just the screen capture and of course the microphone so you can hear me and then me down in the corner and I can just click between the two. Again, usually it's on my other display as I need to. Um, the other scene that I usually have, I usually start the video um, sort of full screen just to sort of say hello to the students. So I'm going to make a copy here, uh, it's called like me only. And I think I can do this so you can actually see it before the screen disappears behind the camera. Um, but the things I want to do are take the camera. Uh, when you edit transform here, there's the scale to outer bounds that, um, that makes sure there's no black bars uh, around um, around the camera just if your camera is not the same shape as your video um, it, it scales so there's no black bars and crops the camera which is probably what i want and then the other thing is transform to be uh, to fit to screen to take up the full display um, oh wait okay i have to do that uh, edit transform edit transform um, and do the scale to outer bounds again i guess it resets it when you say Full screen there we go um, so yeah I usually start the, the lecture this way say hello welcome back and then flip to this and that I think is just about everything that got me through a semester with OBS um, the other thing if as you do start collecting these scenes you might want to know in settings there are these hotkeys and so for each scene you can set a hotkey so I can say like um, you know, control one, control two, and control three. Those are the ones that I use on my computer. Um, and then I can press those keys to, to flip between these three scenes. Um, so I don't have to sort of, you know, move my attention over to my other display. I can just kind of do it very quickly um, without thinking too much about it, and without interrupting the flow of lecture. Um, Otherwise, in the setting window, um, maybe I'll point out this recording path. So when you do click record and it produces a .mkv file, this is where it's going to put it. And of course, you can change that. Um, the other thing I'm going to uh, point out again, the only other thing I think might be necessary to get started in advanced audio properties, if you're noticing an um, audio sync problem, like if your lips don't move at the right time to go with the audio, Usually that's because the video is delayed a little bit. Um, I experimented here with this setup. For me, it seems to be my video is about 100 milliseconds behind my audio. So this just delays the audio so it matches. Otherwise, press record. Um, I, you do what you need to do. I don't edit my videos. For me, like turning to press record is the first frame of every one of my lecture videos and turning to press stop recording is the last. Um, if you want to take those video files and edit them, of course you can. But uh, like I said, I don't. Um, for me, it's OBS, press stop recording, and upload that video file, um, assuming I didn't say anything too stupid. Um, so hopefully that helps people. 
again, I think OBS is a good tool for what we're trying to do here. Um, if you find something else, obviously great. And I have a few other videos uh, in this playlist on this channel for um, setting up audio, uh, video, sort of choosing cameras, choosing microphones. Uh, I will try to make one about streaming from OBS if you do want to live stream. Uh, I think that's a separate topic. But good luck to everybody, however you're teaching. I hope it goes well. Bye.